Good morning, gang. Happy Friday morning. Okay, uh, things are getting interesting. Not a surprise to anybody. If you've seen what happened overnight, we had a, as they're putting it, limited missile attack by Israel on Iran last night. Now, they targeted Isfahan primarily, where Iran has a military air base and also where Iran has some nuclear facilities. Getting any news out of Iran is kind of like trying to get any factual information out of MSNBC. But <clears throat> the Iranians are claiming they shot down all the missiles, that nothing, there was no damage, no fatalities, no whatever. Okay, that's fine. Uh, hopefully we didn't have any sort of nuclear issue overnight or whatever. But here's the catch. Israel hasn't attacked Iran basically ever. Okay, It's always been their proxies. You know, they'd go after a embassy or hit their uh, proxies in regards to Hezbollah or Hamas or anything. No, this time Israel sent missiles directly at the country of Iran. The idea was that hopefully Iran would get the message, don't mess with us, you know, we will retaliate. And I'm not thinking that's probable, okay? You know, you have a thousand plus year hatred between the Iranians and the Israelis, okay? However you want to talk, you say, oh, gee, but you go back to the Shah of Iran, the Shah of Iran was an ally of the United States. doesn't mean the Iranians like the Israelis, okay? Just saying. So, <clears throat> what happens next? Does Iran decide, hey, we're going to send a volley of missiles back at Israel. You look at how wars start. Wars don't start with, oh my God, we're going after everything all at once. We're going to start slow and build, okay? I mean, look at Hitler in World War II going into Poland. Yeah, okay. There wasn't a huge threat. The United States wasn't even involved. England and uh, France were only involved a little bit. There wasn't much, but then as Hitler kept going, kept increasing the blitzkrieg, the war got bigger. Do we see the same thing happen here? Now, Israel notified the United States ahead of time that they were going to send this bar missile barrage into Iran. According to news sources that the United States did not participate, we weren't sending missiles in or anything like that. Doesn't mean it's true, okay? Whatever we're hearing is what they want us to hear. You guys know that all too well. That, you know, Israel's saying one thing in the media, doing another thing. The United States government, doesn't matter which side is running it, says one thing and does something else, you know, try to cover things up. And I mean, we can go back to pick something. I mean, whether it's everything in Ukraine, whether it's going back to Iran-Contra, all right, doesn't matter which side of the political aisle the decisions are coming from, we're never given the full story. And they wonder why the American public is so skeptical, and they wonder why trust in our government is so low. Well, it's because you don't tell us the truth. And so it becomes up to us to have to start to decipher things. Now, let's throw something else. And whether or not they're correlated, I don't know. But the timing is very suspicious. Yesterday, at the U.S. Air Force Academy in Colorado, 
they did a mass casualty training exercise with the hospitals and the whole nine yards. Okay. Military, Air Force, which anything between Iran and Israel is probably going to be handled by the Air Force. You know, not like you're getting a whole lot of naval support going into Iran. Uh, and boots on the ground, Marines and Army, probably not so much yet. So the Air Force would be the primary target, you think, right? And what better place to go after the Air Force than its service academy, okay? So, hmm, let's do a test for a mass casualty event. Now, I'm not saying that Iran is going to be able to lob, lob ICBMs from the Middle East all the way to Colorado, but I don't know how many people have come across the southern border and, gee, just so happen to be winding up going to Colorado, right? Okay. You know, hey, Denver only wants to uh, take the money away from the police departments to house, feed, give movie tickets, I don't know, phones, cars, whatever, to illegals. So, yeah, how many of them may be Iranian or Iranian or Palestinian or Hamas sympathizers, okay, supporters. But that wasn't the only one, okay. This Sunday, two days from now, in Long Island, New York, Southampton Hospital is going to have a coordinated mass casualty disaster training between the hospital, the NYPD, FDNY, EMS, whole nine yards as well. Well, what other place is a high profile target, if you will, for terrorism, Iran, one and the same, basically. Okay. And gee, again, where have we had a whole lot of illegals go? New York. So you start to look at this and go with a skeptical eye again, going, why are they all of a sudden doing mass casualty event trainings in areas where we have a lot of, at least for some of us, I'll call them undesirables in the country, right after tensions have heated up in the Middle East. All the protesting going on in New York from the pro-Palestinian factions, shutting down the bridges, marching through the streets, it doesn't take much. I mean, remember, the Tsarnaev brothers had a couple of pressure cookers and took out a bunch of people in Boston. Okay. It doesn't take much. And you've got a whole bunch of people who are suicidal anyway. They don't care. What happens if somebody tries what happened in 1993 and bombing, like, the World Trade Center back then, but pick a building now. You know, Union State, or not Union Station, but uh, got Chicago on the mic. Uh, can't think of train station in New York off the top of my head. Uh, or hit Times Square or something, right? And all of a sudden, you've got a mass casualty event. <clears throat> We're not being told the truth. There's no question there. We don't know what happened boots on the ground in Iran to tell us what happened. You know, not exactly a whole lot of TikTokers or Instagrammers coming out of, you know, Iran going, gee, look, we just got bombed. Do you think Iran's going to retaliate against Israel? That's inevitable. Do you think Iran's going to retaliate against <clears throat> The United States, we didn't have anything to do with it, but obviously we are Israel's greatest ally. And Iran isn't exactly 
friendly with the United States. They don't care. All right. What happens next? You know, you had all the talk yesterday at the United Nations <clears throat> about a vote to make Palestine an independent nation, right? And the United States vetoed the idea at the UN. You think that's not going to piss off a bunch of Hamas members, Palestinians, all these yahoos who were running around going, you know, free Palestine in New York, Chicago, Boston, wherever? No, of course not. And they're pissed. And now the Biden administration kind of had their feet to the fire on that, going, okay, do we or do we not endorse a Palestinian state? And the United States says, no, we do not, which I agree with, because if you give them an independent state at this point, you are saying, okay, if you're a terrorist, will bow to your wishes. So now you're going to have all the Palestinian supporters pissed off at the U.S. What does that mean? Hmm. Depending on how much support they have for the tactics of Hamas and Hezbollah. Like I said, Paying attention to what the Tsarnaev brothers did might be worthwhile. And mass casualty event exercises in New York at the Air Force Academy, those may be telling us something that the government knows something they ain't telling us. But if you look deep enough, it allows you to be prepared and go out.